Okay, we have two more problems remaining dealing with trigonometric functions and how to find their limits. Hopefully you'll find these interesting. Um, the first one here that we want to consider, we have the secant of 2 theta times the tangent of 3 theta divided by 5 theta, and we want to take a limit of that as theta goes to 0. And clearly we just can't plug in theta is 0 and get an answer because this would be 0, that will be 0. Again, we're stuck with 0 divided by 0, which gets us nowhere. So, probably the thing to do is rewrite this in terms of its basic definitions. So what happens if we do that? I'm just going to rewrite the problem. Here we have 5 times theta. This would be the secant of theta is 1 over the cosine. It's going to be the cosine of 2 theta. Then up here we're going to have the sine of 3 theta divided by the cosine of 3 theta. Now we want the limit as theta goes to 0. And that's coming down near close to almost having the problem finished. Because here, these two, it doesn't matter. We can plug theta equals 0 in for these terms. It's this term right here that we've got to be thinking about. And look what that term is. Sine of 3 theta divided by 5 times theta. Um, we know what our limit theorem is. The sine of theta divided by theta equals 1 when theta goes to 0. The catch is this term and this term have to be exactly the same. And these are not exactly the same. We okay, take the sine of 3 theta. We're not dividing it by 3 theta, though. We're dividing it by 5 theta. But we could, looks like we should be able to manipulate this pretty easily here. So, let's see. The sine of 3 theta divided by 5 theta. If I multiply this by 3 fifths, that will give me 3 theta. And I have to multiply the top part by three fifths. So this would equal the sine of three theta divided by three times theta times three fifths. That's perfectly legitimate. So let's rewrite this. We can say that now we're going to take the limit as theta approaches 0 and we're going to have for this part here, it's this 3 fifths times the sine of 3 theta divided by 3 times theta and then we also have this times 1 over cosine of 2 theta times the cosine of 3 times theta. Now we're pretty well set up. We can do one more thing just to make this more formal, if you will. Here we have this function times this function, and we're taking the limit of this times this, but that's equal to the limit of this function times the limit of this function. So, let's just write that out real quick. This will equal the limit as theta approaches 0 3 fifths times the sine of 3 times theta divided by 3 times theta times the limit Theta goes to 0, 1 over the cosine of 2 theta, 
times the cosine of 2 times theta. So the limit of these two multiplied together is the limit of this one times the limit of this one. You know what this one, this is going to be 1, because theta goes to 0, cosine of 0, cosine of 0, 1 times 1, this is just 1. Now for this one over here, if we didn't have the 3 fifths inside, that would be 1. But we do have the 3 fifths inside, and remember how that works, if you have a function and that function has a definite limit, if I multiply that function by a constant, then the limit is just that constant times the old limit. So, that's 1. I'm multiplying this by a constant. So the new limit is going to be 3 fifths times 1, or just 3 fifths. So the limit of this one is 3 fifths, and the limit of this one is 1. So our answer here then is that is equal to 3 fifths. So really, once we rewrote this in terms of basic definitions, once we got to that step right here, we hadn't done anything yet, we just rewrote the problem. But as soon as that was done, we realized this is getting us very close to where we want to be. And that was just a matter of just doing some very basic manipulations so we could get it in this form right here, so we could use our basic theorem. And the rest of it just fell into place then. So, that's it for that problem. Let's see. Here we have, for our next and final one, we have got the limit is x goes to 0. The cotangent of 2x divided by the cosecant of x. And really, do we need this stuff? Let's rewrite this in terms of basic definitions. One of the cosecant, the cosecant is 1 over the sine. So this, since this is in the denominator, it's going to put the sine of x up here in the numerator. And the cotangent, that's the cosine of 2x divided by the sine of 2x. Again, the cosecant, that's 1 over the sine of x. And I've got 1 over this, which is 1 over that, which is sine of x. So that, could, that ends up here in the numerator. Okay, so we want to take now this limit. And let's see. We can't just plug it in though because this will give us 0 and this will give us 0. Again, we're stuck with 0 over 0, but Hopefully you're taking a real close look at this because now once again we have that double angle formula. The sine of 2 times x equals 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x. So let's put that in there. Now we're going to have sine of x times the cosine of 2x divided by this. 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x. And we want the limit as x goes to 0. Now we get rid of those troublesome sine terms. And now we can just plug in x equals 0. Cosine of 0, that's 1. Cosine of 0, that's 1, times 2 is 2. That's 1 half. So our answer for this one here, 1 half. So that's it. I uh, hope it was worthwhile for you. Uh, definitely, if you have time, come back and join us for some more videos. 
and we'll see if we can work some more problems.